So who does not love creating with new items? I love when there's a new release and I get to play away. So in today's video, I am teaming up with IOD for their amazing summer release. Hi friends, this is Yvonne from Ginger Chicory. So if you're new to my channel, I love to take secondhand finds and make them over and share the process with you all. And so in today's video, I will be doing that using some of the IOD summer release Oh, y'all, wait for them. They are just so fun. They are along that primitive line that has my heart. So first up is this bread box. Now, this is MDF board. It has that kind of coating on it that's not necessarily paint. But, oh, when I saw that chopping board, I thought in the way that this opened and closed... It had to come home with me and I had to make it over. Yes, you can make over these type of pieces with a little bit of work. Of course, I would like to take apart their bread box, but it's just not doable, especially since it's not real wood, it's MDF board. I would be causing more problems, but I can take off the knob, so I will go ahead and do that. Nothing says a flipped item like leaving a sticker on, so I'll be using a heat gun to reactivate that sticky to take, which I think it says a target. This was a target item. The new paint to stick, I need to prep this. I need to get it sanded. I need something for my paint to grab onto. It is a super shiny coating that they put on this MDF board. So just some 220 sandpaper, just roughing it up to give it some grit. Up for my prep is to get the surface clean so I'm just using some Dawn dish soap some hot water and just wiping the entire box down since I couldn't take this apart the easiest way to paint this box is to spray it and my favorite paint that I like to use an MDF board and this type of a paint coating is the enamel paint by Rust-Oleum and I'm using the flat black not just do a beautiful job getting a nice clean surface painted on this box so now now we're going to add some detail to that center part and I'm super excited to be teaming up with IOD on this and using some of the paint inlays oh look at that beauty and this is almost like it's made for your darker paint so I'm going to be using one of the florals in the middle of this. I just, that black and the way that this is, just wait till you see it, you all. It is just gorgeous. Look at how that's just going to pop. Now, it, it's a little bit big for the space that I'm working on. So I kind of thought maybe just keeping the greenery around the side. Um, but I'm like, uh, I, you know, it's still a little bit too big and I wouldn't know if I could necessarily get it even. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut out just the flowers and oh my gosh, the flowers are just gorgeous. Know down in the comments below have you tried one of the iod paint inlays now it's a little bit of a process but it's absolutely gorgeous now even though i've already pre-painted this it's going to be acting like a primer i need to use a chalk paint something for my paint inlay to stick to to transfer the image so the chalk paint i have on hand is waverly ink chalk paint and it is black just like the black that i sprayed on i'll do another coat on the entire box on the outer of the box of this to make sure that it matches but for the inlay part i'm just going to go ahead and use that ink now it doesn't take a ton you don't have to have a ton on just enough to make the two paints bond together 
Now I'm just going to lightly mist reactivate, make sure that my Waverly paint is still wet, just with a mister bottle. Nice to have on hand for lots of projects anyway. And now I'm just going to go ahead and put that inlay right in that center. And you can see that it's blending in right with that paint. So I'm just gonna rub it with my fingers at first to make sure that it's good and attached. I'm gonna go ahead and mist it one more time. I really wanna make sure those paints are blending well together. And then I'll just pat it down with a little bit of a wet rag just to make sure that it's in that paint. And then while it's drying, I'm gonna go ahead and I off camera painted the rest of the, the outside of the box. It already had the nice primer coat from the enamel paint. You could just leave the enamel paint as is too, but I need to do that and then set it off to the side and let it completely dry. Now that it's completely dry, I need to re-moisten it. And all I'm doing is using a wet rag. So I'm just gonna rinse out most of the water and then I'm just going to start applying it on where that inlay is. Now that I have it all moistened up again, now it's time to remove that inlay. So I'm just going to see which little corner I can peel up, making sure that it's staying wet. If you have a little, it should pull up easy. So if you have a little resistance, you just want to wet that spot a little bit more, but oh, look at, look, it almost looks like a mirror imaged. Oh my goodness, is it not gorgeous? So now I need to let that completely dry and I'm going to go in with some polycrylic in the clear mat and seal the whole box in. Remember I repainted the outside of the box, just the outside, to make sure that my blacks were matching. Now this is gorgeous as is and I could leave it alone but my vision is to distress this box. I really want to get some of that white cream color back through some of the wood tone from the MDF board back through. It will just take this box to the next level and really bring out the details in this inlay. Mm -hmm. Not all areas could I get with my mouse sander, so I'm gonna go back in with some fine grit steel wool and just make sure that everything is nice and smooth. See my vision, how distressing, it just really made the inlay even pop more. They all just play right on top of each other, but I need to get rid of all that sanding dust before I move on to seal this piece in, and I'm just using various things, natural wax in the clear to seal this entire piece in. Even though I sealed this in with polycrylic, I still want to double seal this, and I roughed it all up. I didn't make that black paint look so pretty by sanding on it, but the Verithane wax, the clear wax, is just going to bring it back to life. And one more step that I need to do, I need to sand the cutting board that came with this box. There's some cut marks. I want this to be just as new as what the outer piece is. So I'm gonna start off with 80 grit to remove the cut marks. Um, going with the grain of the wood and then after I get that all done I'll go from 150 to 220 to make sure that everything is nice and smooth all sides both sides and the sides themselves recondition the wood of the cutting board I'm just using some Howard's cutting board oil that will just rejuvenate this and give it new life
Now my next box makeover is this box. So for this one, it's got that um, crackle and it's got a painted apple on it. So I wanna go ahead and get that sanded off and get it nice and smooth. For the areas I just can't get with my orbital sander, I'm gonna go in with the tip of my mouse sander and get that sanded off. And then I'm gonna go ahead and scuff sand the entire box. There's not really too much of a clear coat on there, but and actually not very much damage, but it's just something to scuff this piece up that will help my paint adhere. Now I loved running across these boxes because there's that detail on the front of them that I can embellish. So I'm not quite ready to do this one yet. So I need to tape off the that part of this one because I have a different plan for the outside of the box than that area quite yet. And I'm gonna go ahead and remove the wooden knob, though I don't think I'm gonna be reusing this wooden knob, maybe the screw, but you never know, because sometimes the, the knobs um, don't always fit the same screw, but I'm gonna do that same thing, down dish soap, hot water, just a perfect degreaser to get any crud off that will prevent my paint from sticking. So the part of the IOD summer release are primitives. And y'all who watch my channel regularly know that primitives are my vibe. Oh, wow. So I was so happy to participate in this. So for the paint color on this box, I'm actually going to be using Fusion's Willow Bank. When I think of primitives, I think of the darker colors. So this was just a perfect color to use on this box. Go down in the comments below. Do you love the fusion paint as much as I do? I am hooked. I'm just trying to build up my colors in my cabinet. I just love how this goes on. Paint, primer, and top coat all in one. And it just glides on so nice. And I will link all of the IOD summer release and the fusion paints down in my description. And my go-to is always Vonda from the Painted Heirloom. She is just a wonderful small business to work with. And she offers a discount code through Ginger Chick 10 if you are a first time buyer. So a wonderful way to get some of these new IOD release or to try some of the fusion paints. When applying the second coat of this paint, it will just amaze you with the coverage and how smooth of a paint job this is. So my paint is dry, but I thought before it's completely cured, I'm going to go ahead and add these little feet. I just like adding little feet um, to keep these. A lot of times people use these boxes in their kitchen and sometimes the kitchen counter gets wet, blah, blah, blah. But I want to raise it up so it's not just standing in water. So these little feet off of Amazon work perfectly. They're just little rubber and then you just screw them in. Before moving on, I want to go ahead and distress my piece before I get anything on that center part. Just a personal preference on the, the distressing um, is just going to, I mean, the paint job is already smooth, but it's just the look that I'm going for, an old-timey distressed look. that you all came to see oh my heart y'all if i didn't love the toadstools i love this just as much primitive molds oh and then deciding birds bunnies flowers leaves oh my goodness the decisions the possibilities are endless with this mold set Okay, I think I have my decision made. I'm using the IODs clay, love their clay. It's so workable. Um, now to release my molds, I'm using a little a bit of baking soda just in the molds. And as you see, I decided to do the bunnies. Oh, I can't wait to see what they look like. 
So I'm just going to take a piece of the clay. I'm just going to start warming it up in my hand so it's a little bit more pliable. And then just work it right into that mold. Nothing like that. They have such a nice cut edge on there. It's so easy to get a clean mold. So I just pack it and then I take my Pampered Chef scraper. Do you all use your Pampered Chef scraper for what it's actually used for? You know, they used to give those things away by the drove. So a lot of us have them. So I just, it's just a nice, helpful, straight edge tool to make sure that I got that excess clay off. Now the bunnies are not exactly alike. If you can tell one's legs are out farther than the other, the arms, the front legs are different, ears up, ears down, but I think that just gives it so much visually interest. So now I'm gonna have them looking at this beautiful flower in the middle. And then I'm also going to do two of the lines on the bottom just uh, you know, you could just keep on going, but you know, you just have to know when it's good enough. Oh, this definitely, it, it definitely is primitive, you know. So I'm going to go ahead and try to measure off as best as I can. It'll probably be that perfectly imperfect because once you put glue on it and then you slap it down. Now to glue them down, I like the CA Starbond glue because I like it to be that instant, instant, adhesion so you don't really have a ton of play time as you would like a Gorilla Glue or the E6000. Just a personal preference of I want it to dry a little bit faster. Even though the clay won't be dry, the glue itself will be dry. two rulers that fit I had two of the transfer rubbers so that worked out perfectly that way I had something to guide while my molds are still wet I'm going to go ahead and use the fusion cashmere color to paint them so first I'm just going to get a healthy amount especially around why it is why the mold's wet and my glue is dry that's why I like the CA glue because I know my glue is dry I can really kind of press on the clay mold itself to make sure that I don't have any gaps or it's not lifting or anything like that and really get paint in there that's another reason it's good to paint them when they're they're wet and now to get close to my edges, I'm just going to switch over to a fan brush. That way I can do that little detail a little bit better. I don't want to really tape off something that I just freshly painted. So if there's a little paint here and there, it's that perfectly imperfect, you know, it's a handmade, made with love piece. I was able to get two coats of paint, but I want my molds to be completely dry for this step. So I let it completely dry overnight. Now I want to go in and do some antiquing. So I'm going to mix my waxes. So I have Jolie's Black Wax. I have Waverly's Antiquing Wax. And for an eraser <laughs> to control, I have some natural wax on hand. And I'm just doing a dry brush technique. And yes, I'm going to be antiquing this entire box also. So I'm just going to start blending in on the sides. When I say a dry brush, that means that it just has minimal of the product on it.
offense to those waxes, you just keep working with them until you love them. So now I'm on to replacing the knob. And no, I don't like the original knob now that I painted it, but I do have this pretty in my stash that I think goes well with the antiquing and the flower in the middle. So I'm just going to go ahead and replace that. Now talk about a project piece. <laughs> Look at this one. It does have its hinges and its hardware, but yep, it is ready to get a makeover. And I know there's probably many think, well, just create with what that is, but I have a different vision for this box. So I'm going to go ahead and paint over this white distressed on the top. I need it to be black underneath. But I want to keep the inside of this box just the way it is, so I'm going to take the time to tape off the inside area. When I think of primitives, I think of the dark and the borders, the primaries, and I think of the old-timey colors. So I'm actually going to be using some of Sweet Pickens Milk Paint in the Pickle color. Oh, wow. How much, how much fun is this? So that will really trans form this box. So it's equal parts of the powder to equal parts of the water. Now we need to stir it for about two minutes until it kind of forms a pancake batter consistency. Just sit it off to the side and it'll thicken up in a little bit. Then just go ahead and start applying. Now you really want to probably work from the top of your item. It is a little bit on the runny side. It's made to crackle. It's made really not to be in it one coat coverage, even coverage at all. It's supposed to look like old timey paint. So it's supposed to be that perfectly imperfect. So you, you will, it will run down as you're painting with it, but that's the way it's supposed to be. talk about the perfectly imperfect this is exactly what I mean we have some crackles we have some thick spots we have some runs but that's just the way you want it so I want to add a little bit more age to this by taking some 220 sandpaper on my orbital sander and just make it nice and smooth take a little bit of pieces here and there that are, were a little bit thicker where I got it on just that perfectly imperfect of it all and to add some detail to the front, I'm going to be using the Pennsylvania Folk Stamps. Oh my goodness, do those birds and these flowers have my heart. I love that there's two of them. I love that they're facing each other, just like those bunnies I used earlier in the molds. I, wow. Anyway, so I'm going to be using my stamping mound to place them on to get them nice and evened up. And I'm just kind of, you know... Playing with them a little bit, and then I'll figure out which one of the flowers I'd like in the middle, and then if I need anything else. Now that I have an idea of what I'm doing, I have it centered out on my stamping mount that I can go ahead and put some pieces of tape so when I get them all inked up, I know where I need to put it back on the front of this. With this being the first time I'm using these stamps, I need to go ahead and condition them, just running some 220 sandpaper just over them, just so they accept the ink a little bit better and they'll leave a clearer impression. 
and I'm going to be using the IODs ink in black, but I want to do a little tester to see how this looks. So I just took a piece of her contractor's paper off the roll and I thought, well, I'm just going to give it a, a try first before I make the commitment of putting it on to that top. I do like what I see, so I'm going to go ahead and get it inked back up, and we're going to go for it. love those stamps even more when I see them on that pickle color oh my goodness but I do think those corners need a little bit something so I'm going to take this fan flower and use it just in the corners and I'm going to do the little cheater method of just using one little stamp I just use a piece of packing tape put the stamp on there fold over some little corners so I have something to hold on to get it inked up and then just eyeball that it's going to be centered I can see so many creations with those stamps right now. My head is just a spinning. So now I'm going to go ahead and distress the rest of the box. I just love how this, I, I love how this paint did that perfectly and perfect of it all. But I just want some of the natural coming through some of the black. That's why I wanted to paint the, the front area black too. So that's what you would be seeing, not that white from underneath. Yep, I taped off the bottom of this too, already added its little feet Why it was not painted. So we would be good to go once it was all painted. And now I just need to take the tape off and then run the sander over that where that paint builds up. It always leaves a hard, crusty edge. So we'll go ahead and smooth that out. And I'm just going to replace the original hardware that came with it. It has that aged look to it. I think it's that perfectly imperfect that goes with the whole box. So we will just get it reattached. Now I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more age to this piece. That's why I wanted to get all the hardware and the hinges back on it so it had that continuous flow um, when I was waxing it. So I'm going in on the edges with that same Jolie's wax. I just love what mixing um, the paint with these waxes just does. So it's really going to really bring out some of those crackles. And then the black of that stencil, it's really just going to blend it all together. So as you see, I'm working from the edges to the inside because I don't want to completely cover up what I just stamped on. So thank you so much for watching today's video and give me a quick comment down below which of the items I made over today were your favorite. Um, are you interested in any of the IOD summer release? I always 
always Link Vonda from the Painted Heirloom. That's who hooks me up with these wonderful IOD items. Oh my goodness, you guys. And if you are new to purchasing from a small business like Vonda's, that she offers a 10% off Ginger Chick 10 code. So make sure you use that code to get a discount because who does not love a discount? Again, go down to the description below if you're interested. Check her out. Check out the new products. Oh, did I have a lot and of fun. Thank you for watching today's video. And if you're part of our YouTube family, thank you so much. And if you are new and you're checking out this channel for the first time and you liked what you saw, you love to watch DIYs, crafts, and making over secondhand finds, please smash that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know when I've uploaded a new video. And we will see you next time, guys, and you can see what we're up to. Bye! Mm -hmm.